Okay, let me continue the, the what I have done in the next uh, last lecture. I have mentioned that that vibration solution can be of four different types. One is uh, undamped free vibration, damped free vibration, then undamped force vibration, and damped force vibration. So I have discussed very briefly about undamped and damped free vibration and their solution how they looks like the amplitude how vary with time uh, that I have shown. Now, I will try to take that uh, force vibration and that to uh, uh, undamped force vibration and damped force vibration and we start with the damped uh, undamped force vibration. Uh, let me uh, take the first slide and you can see here uh, undamped force vibration. So, undamped force vibration means what if, if I consider here and then this is the mass and here there is a force is given F t. Okay. So, if I draw the free body diagram of this then we will get what uh, this the mass on that mass there will be m and u double dot will be there and because of the spring you have if you pull this direction then there will be k times x uh, k times u is a spring force and this side actually F t. So, this is the free body diagram. So, if I consider the dynamic equilibrium for this in the horizontal direction then I am getting m u double dot plus uh, k times u equal to f t. Okay. So, this is the equation we have got and this is an equation actually this equation so, solution of this equation will contain two part actually. Actually one will be particular solution one is particular solution another is complementary solution. Complementary solution complementary solution is what it comes uh, from m u dot do, double dot plus k u equal to 0. If I put this one from there actually we will we'll get a solution dot cell solution already we have done. So, so, that will be the one part plus I will have a particular solution. So, particular solution of this actually I just better re, re, remove this and then I will do particular solution for this actually uh, for that uh, we can assume u equal to a 1 sin sin omega t plus beta like that I can assume uh, uh, initial solution and then uh, finally, uh, we can uh, uh, apply uh, your uh, different boundary condition and then if I put finally, this through particular solution assuming this and by, by applying boundary condition that result actually this is the solution. So, this solution plus solution based on m u double dot plus k u equal to 0 together will be the solution of this. Okay and uh, uh, it can be shown that uh, in the real system since there is a some amount of damping present. So, this part actually will be absent. So, only response whatever we will get finally, because of this after some time. So, because of that we will try to understand this part actually. So, you can see here uh, uh, with the uh, change of frequency this is the operating frequency suppose and this is natural frequency omega over omega n square with this change of this actually this become smaller and after some time it will become negative also. So, if you plot the response then you will see the response next page I will show you the response looks like this. Okay. So, the value the magnification factor actually the magnification factor actually what uh, whatever we have got the solution uh, u equal to 
u uh, equal to f naught over k divided by 1 minus omega over omega n square. So, this part this part is called magnification factor. So, that means with omega over omega n what is the value of magnification how magnification factor is varying. So, magnification factor this is actually constant force constant force but divided by stiffness that means that is nothing but static displacement whatever initial static displacement multiplied by the magnification factor actually the amplitude okay, at any frequency. So, to find out that we can see this is the plot and of course, this is negative, but we can take the absolute value. So, if I consider it will be plot it will be something like that. Okay. So, this is the uh, the forced uh, undamped vibration that is the solution. Okay. And uh, now, I will uh, discuss uh, the point as I have already uh, discussed before that uh, if there is a, a eccentric mass and rotating at a speed of omega and then the force here actually is nothing it is equal to m the eccentric mass if it is m e and this eccentric distance is a that means, this diameter of this circular uh, circle is 2 e that means, eccentricity that it is, it is rotating with a radius e. So, m eccentric mass m e multiplied by e that be eccentricity multiplied by the frequency square that become the force and that force actually acts radially upward uh, up, uh, outward. So, that means, in this direction and it can have actually two component horizontal and vertical because of that if that is there then at same time we'll, we may get both vertical and horizontal motion. But if I arrange them in a particular way, that means if I use two rotating part in a particular manner, I can see here, and then uh, this this force this direction is this. So I can have two component. One is this direction, another is this direction. Similarly, uh, uh, sorry, not here. Uh, this direction and this direction. Similarly, here actually I can have this direction and this direction and if mass and eccentricity and, and frequency are same both mass then this horizontal face to face will get cancelled and this one actually will be added. So, like that uh, so if I plot now uh, it will be here suppose when both are here when both are here actually it will become 0 and then slowly when they are moving this direction then this amplitude will be increased some value here and then again when it will come here this will be upward that so it will become 0. So, like that again it will when it will come there it will be increased to a value maximum value and then when it will come again so it will become again 0. So, like that with the rotation actually your dynamic force will vary like this. Okay. So, this is that means and that means uh, every time you can see wherever you go when it is at this point both the horizontal part get cancelled and when it comes actually both the vertical part added when here both the vertical part added when it is here both the horizontal part will get cancelled. So, that means nowhere there is a horizontal component. So, everywhere you will feel the vertical dynamic force and that is the variation actually. Similarly, if I use in combination in two shaft actually that you can see here this is giving vertical. Uh, so, both are going vertically and now here actually you can see uh, this mass and this mass when it is coming in this direction and when this mass and this is going this direction and uh, this is the way that means, it is getting a vibration like this when these two are this direction these two are in this direction. So, it is once it is this way motion and next it is motion like this. So, like that it will be repeated. So, that means, the same mass if I use in a two shaft in this con ma manner then I will we can I will be able to produce actually uh, torsional vibration. Similarly, if I use the mass in another configuration that means, when these two mass is going upward these two mass going downward that means, it is rotating like this. So, once it is when this side is upward this side downward 
again when this side upward this side is downward. So, like that its motion is taking place. So, that is called rocking actually. So, that means when there is a mass it is rotating like this that is rocking that means when the axis passing through the base it is rotating that is actually rocking and when this mass actually rotating with respect to axis uh, vertical axis that is actually torsion and then another is actually when it is vibrating like this vertical another is when it is vibrating like this horizontal. So, that means in the real system any uh, that means we can have four uh, modes of vibration actually one is vertical horizontal rocking and torsion. So, that is the thing by uh, combining the rotating mass in different ways how all types of vibration can be created it is simulated here actually. So, this is actually uh, single mass rotating then it is like that uh, at simultaneously we will feel horizontal or vertical motion and if I put together then we will see that only vertical and then if I combine them in a two shaft both are downward or both are upward then it is pure vertical when both are in uh, this this side one direction then this side is opposite direction that means it is with respect to a vertical axis rotating like this no, sorry rotating like this then that is torsion and when this two masses are upward these two mass are downward that means with respect to a horizontal axis it is going up and down like this so that is actually rocking motion so that means all three types of uh, four types of motion are shown here similarly if you think of a block like this this is the block suppose as having some base and has some so this is actually you can see now whatever i have shown with respect to this block i can show you the different modes you can see here that when the force is acting centrally to this block and repeating like this then it will be pure vertical motion similarly if some force acting on the surface and through the so then it will be horizontal motion if it is it, if it acts through the cg of the uh, mass actually if it is acting on the surface of the block then what will happen at the cg distance from the cg to the surface whatever distance is there a horizontal force multiplied by that distance will create a moment in the at the at the cg so in that case if you apply horizontal force on the surface then it will not be horizontal motion when the force is acting through the cg of this block then only there will be a, a horizontal motion so that is one that vertical is there then horizontal if it is through the cg and then with, with respect to this vertical axis if there is a force like this acting then there will be rotation that means this block once it is rotating this direction next time it is rotating this direction so and it continues then that is actually torsional mode of block actually rotating like this and then i can actually see rocking motion that means there will be horizontal axis here and with respect to this rock if the, the block block rotates once it is going downward this side next time it is going downward this side then uh, so and it repeats uh, it continues uh, that blocks moves like this then that is actually rocking motion similarly rocking can be of two direction with respect to rotation with respect to shorter axis and rotation with respect to longer axis so that way the two types of rocking it is one is rocking another is pitching so this is called pitching and this is called rocking so of, of course the, uh, principally they are same rotation with respect to uh, axis on the base that means it is uh, like this and when it is uh, torsion it is like this uh, that means with respect to vertical axis it will be rotating like this and and vertical means it is pure vertical horizontal means pure so in the block itself we can have all modes of uh, motion because of the uh, 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 circular uh, rotating mass in the machine the way it is there if it produce uh, force in such a way that it is going once this direction once this direction with this vertical then it will rotation and if it produce vertical force once this side once this side then it will create rocking motion so like that we can also visualize for any block all modes of vibration whatever i have shown previous one So, because of that uh, whatever I have shown that uh, 
uh, that equation of motion for free vibration. Uh, so, uh, so not free force vibration uh, undamped pro vi force vibration I have shown m u double dot plus k times u equal to f t I have written this is the equation I have shown. Now, I if I give the four modes of vibration of four different notation when it is a vertical motion suppose if I use z when it is a horizontal motion if I use x and when it is a rocking motion if I use psi rocking motion actually what is the amplitude amplitude here actually rotation because it is rotating like this. So, how much it is from the vertical rotating that is actually rotational amplitude both rocking and torsion it will have rotational amplitude and uh, ro rocking means actually it is rotating like this with respect to vertical how much it is rotating that angle to be is the amplitude and what is a uh, 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 torsional mode actually with respect to some horizontal distance how much it is going that is actually amplitude of the motion that, that also rotational amplitude theta psi and theta actually is actually rotational amplitude uh, in rocking mode and in this. So, you can see so similar to this if I write for vertical motion and z actually is a uh, is a vertical amplitude then corresponding equation will become like this. Similarly, if I consider the amplitude of uh, uh, horizontal uh, direction is x then your ex expression of horizontal motion will be like this if I rocking motion if I consider rotation as psi and then your rocking motion will be a equation of the rocking motion will be something like that. And here actually another thing to be noted that when it is a horizontal motion or vertical motion inertia force was there okay. and inertia force was mass into acceleration and when it is a rotational mode actually there actually an inertia force will be different. Instead of mass actually here actually mass second moment of area multiplied by the rotational uh, uh, acceleration and when actually a torsional mode it is actually mass moment of inertia multiplied by rotational acceleration. And what is this i psi i theta etcetera I will discuss later on and uh, so if we understand this vertical and horizontal motion other thing can be understood easily same similar only thing these are the parameters will change what are the changes I will discuss later on. So, that means general equation undamped force vibration equation I have written like this. Now, if I want uh, vertical motion, if I want horizontal motion or if you want uh, 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 rocking motion or if you want rotational motion their corresponding equation I can write like this with the note uh, respecting notation that means, z is vertical motion, x is the horizontal motion, psi is the rotation with respect to horizontal axis, theta is the rotation with respect to vertical axis. So, this is the way one can visualize for different equation, but solution method and all will be same only thing x will be or u will be replaced by either z or x or psi or theta okay. and mass will be replaced by sometime i psi and i theta, i theta depending upon type of rotational mode. Okay. So, now you can see here uh, I have already already mentioned that z is the vertical displacement, x is the horizontal displacement, psi angle of rotation around horizontal axis. That means, if this is the block uh, rotating with respect to this, so this block will be rotate, rotating like this. So, this angle this angle will be psi. Similarly, if the block if the block is there rotating with respect to this axis. So, I can I will not be able to show here that means, in each from the initial position how much is rotating that is actually theta. So, so theta will be angle of rotation around vertical axis and you can see that uh, 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 that we have mentioned that for uh, uh, display uh, translational mode when I have written equation u. Uh, uh, sorry m u double dot plus k times u equal to suppose 0 there actually 
we have m omega n equal to under root k by n. So, where k is the spring coefficient. So, when I will consider different mode, so different mode will have different spring coefficient. So, when it is a vertical mode, the expression for spring coefficient is like this, when it is a, uh, when it is a uh, uh, horizontal mode of vibration, then horizontal spring coefficient is like that, when it is a rocking mode, rocking spring coefficient is like that what is a torsional mode it is a torsional spring coefficient is like that that what how it is coming actually. So, uh, I assume a block a circular block on the on the ground on the on the soil. Now, the spring stiffness is nothing but because of this loading in this or uh, whatever w acting. So, it will produce some deflection ok. And by applying elastic theory, I can find out what will be if I w load if I apply on the homogeneous house space, you know, how much will be the deflection I know. And then finally, load by deflection is giving you k z and that is actually theoretically obtained that if I w load if I apply on a surface with a radius r and then whatever deformation will be there and that deformation w deformation that deformation if I do ultimately I get the expression which will be equal to 4 g r by 1 minus mu g is the shear modulus of the soil and mu is the Poisson ratio. Similarly, uh, if I apply horizontal force on the on a block on the ground surface then there will be horizontal displacement that also theoretically elastically I can find out and that load divided by that horizontal displacement if I do I will get another expression like k x equal to 8 g r by 2 minus that is horizontal stiffness. Similarly, if I a, a circular block if I give a couple moment of m then whatever rotation is taking place that rotation that m divided by that rotation if I do I will get the rotational stiffness k psi which is elastically obtained and it is the expression. Similarly, if I in a circular block if I give a uh, resting on the soil and if I give a, 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 a torsion t torsional t then whatever rotation will be there that tor torque divided by rotation uh, that if from there actually I will get torsional stiffness. So, these are all theoretically obtained values and you can see nicely it is given in terms of radius of the radius of the uh, of the uh, um, block and the soil properties actually g uh, social modulus and Poisson ratio. So, k z k x k psi k theta there can be four this will be actually be, you have to remember actually expression for stiffness for different modes you have to remember because when you want to find out natural frequency first thing we have to use this ok. Similarly, now if I uh, uh, forced uh, damped vibration if I do then uh, forced damp vibration means how it will be it will be something like that it will be spring and then it will be and this mass and then F t ok and this is there. So, if I draw the free body of this mass then on the in this there will be m times u double dot that acceleration will be there k times x the because of steam uh, spring deformation that force will be there and because of the dashpot dashpot will c times u that damping coefficient is actually proportional to velocity. So, you damping force will be velocity multiplied by damping coefficient. So, these are the things and here actually f t. So, so that means, if I now consider the uh, uh, equilibrium in vertical direction. So, you will see the m u double dot plus c u dot plus k u it is not x it is u equal to f t equal to f t. 
So, this is the equation. So, this equation is shown here and you can see f t can be f naught sin omega t or f t can be as I have told that if there is a uh, with a constant force with some frequency if it repeats then that will be the f t and in a system there is a eccentric mass and rotates with a ro frequency omega at any frequency what is the f t this is the value. So, the dynamic force can be of this way or it can be of this way. Okay. So, when it is a rotating mass system this is the dynamic force when a constant force is a, this is the force. So, now uh, this this like uh, uh, undamped force vibration uh, we have seen that there are uh, two component of uh, uh, solution will have two components one will be the particular solution that means taking the equation as it is and another is complementary solution that means when will f t equal to 0 uh, this equation uh, equate uh, right side equal to 0 then it will give you another solution. So, this uh, the, when you will put f t equal to 0 then uh, whatever solution I will get plus keeping this equation as it is I will get another solution that is called particular solution another one called complementary solution these two together will be the actual solution of the this system, but uh, as we know that that complementary part because of the damping present in the system after some time will be will be absent. So, because of that that what a particular solution only will produce the vibration in the system. So, taking into that into consideration uh, we will see that uh, sorry uh, we will get finally, uh, uh, the solution something like this we will get solution like this u will be something like this okay. and, and if you plot and this is actually delta static and this can be called as magnification factor and this is you can see this is the magnification factor that with this portion plotted with this this is plotted with respect to omega over omega and you can see omega over omega n or omega over omega n and uh, omega equal to 2 pi into f. So, uh, f by omega over omega n is nothing but f by f n. So, if I plot this way uh, this this uh, expression that means 1 minus omega over omega n square whole square plus 2 d omega over omega n whole square under root this is suppose a function and uh, this is actually said uh, m. So, this m versus omega omar omega n is plotted for different values of damping you can see and you can see that up to certain uh, frequency ratio the whatever may be the damping the amplitude is almost you can say constant and if you give if you give if you reach a very high amplitude again whatever may be the damping the amplitude is almost same and that means, what is the role in damping actually damping has a maximum role close to the resonance. Okay. If I put if you see damping equal 0 0.1 percent this is a finite value and if you put damping equal to 0 in this say this will be infinity actually. Okay. So, that means, damping has a maximum significant role in the resonance zone only. So, other than at high frequency and low frequency uh, damping does not have much role actually it has almost close to the static displacement. Anyway uh, with this I will stop today I will uh, see I will continue uh, the other aspect of this in the next class thank you.